Do your children hang up their wet towels? My daughter will not do it any day of the week, but my son puts it back with military discipline. He also puts his cereal box back exactly where it belongs, the shoes back exactly where they belong, the books where they belong. However, my son has the vocabulary of a toddler. I still remember when he was about five years old, and as I was dropping him to school one day, it was a bright sunny day, we were listening to his favorite song, wheels on the bus go round and round, wipers swishing, all of that stuff going on, very, very happy day. And the teacher said to me, as I was there, she said, I need to talk to you, can we sit down for a bit? And then we went in, and I already knew, I already knew there was something, something she was going to say. And I heard it, something, 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 and finally, I don't know if he'll be able to read, she said. He can't identify a single letter, she said. And my heartbeat went from 70 to 92. You see, my son has autism, and, and we knew that there were some things he could do, some things he couldn't do, but read, all of those wheels stopped turning, all of those swish, swish sounds just suddenly disappeared. A few days later, as I was walking him back to my car after school, another car drove by and he said, Toyota. And I said, mm-hmm and we walked, and then I said, wait a minute, what about this one? I pointed to another parked car, and he said, Honda. And I said, hmm, what about this one? And he said, Beamer. So I took him, and we went back to the school, and I sat down with the teacher, and I said, you know, he cannot identify a single letter, but he loves cars, and he can identify the cars by his symbols of those cars. And so then the teacher was able to start utilizing those symbols to teach him his alphabet. When we first found out about his autism diagnosis, all of my dreams for him had shattered. We were thinking Ivy League. We were thinking MIT. We were thinking everything possible for him that me and my husband and our families could only have dreamt of. And we had no idea that something like autism could come into our life. I mean, the only indication I had was that he wasn't getting potty trained. And my friends told me, he's a boy. Boys take forever to get potty trained. Boys don't talk as much. It's the girls that are chatty. Boys can't sit still. So all of these things he was doing, they were just normalized to me. Autism was not even on the radar. And so when I found out, I just didn't know how to accept it. Because whenever I had faced any kind of issue, any kind of problem, I kind of knew what to do about it. I knew I could work hard. So I worked very hard. I did a lot of research on autism. I, I went to every doctor I could find. And, and, and then I invested in, in, in new therapies, $10,000 for a hyperbaric oxygen treatment. And I prayed. I prayed to every Hindu god and goddess I could find. Trust me, there's lots of them. I sat down and did positive thinking positive mindset, no negative thinking allowed in the house. And the more I did all of these things, the more I worked hard, I was just exhausted and nothing worked. Nothing worked until I found the power of resilient acceptance. In our life, we will all face situations where we did nothing to deserve them, nothing to have them come into our lives, and they leave us powerless, and we don't know how to cope, and we don't know what to do when we're facing something where nothing else that we had tried in the past works anymore. One of the reasons why difficult things are harder for us to accept is because we tried to judge them. A situation is bad, 
a situation is horrible because it comes from a place of anger and fear and we're disappointed and we feel it's so unfair and when all of those emotions cloud our judgment how are you supposed to cope how are you supposed to come up with any kind of creative solutions so I sat down and started accepting my son just the way he is. This didn't mean that I was giving up on him because acceptance is not about being uncaring or it doesn't bother you anymore or just giving up. No, no, no. Acceptance is about facing the situation and accepting it without any kind of judgment. So I chose to accept my son, love my son, embrace him exactly as he was. And what I discovered was the more I did, I started seeing things from his perspective. So instead of forcing him to eat the things that I wanted him to eat, I would just let him eat something that he wanted and just observe him. And then slowly we would start cooking together. And then I'd take him grocery shopping together. We'd pick things together. I went more and more into his world. And as I was more open to accept him, he was more open to start eating the things that I wanted him to eat. If he didn't want to read, we didn't read. If he just wanted to sit and stare at the window, I would just sit next to him and I would stare at the window with him. And I started noticing things that he was noticing, like a beautiful butterfly that I just hadn't noticed, a beetle somewhere in the corner that I just hadn't paid attention to. And I discovered a greater sense of calmness in myself. And as I slowed down, as I became calmer, I was now able to come up with much more creative ideas, much more creative solutions to work with him and meet him where he was. For example, when he couldn't figure out addition, he just memorized the numbers, one, two, three, four, five, and he memorized phrases like one plus two is three, but he asked him two plus one, he would just stare at you because he didn't actually know addition. He just knew that one plus two is four is something that you're supposed to memorize. And so we started working with him using blocks. We did one block and then we did two blocks and we did three blocks and we wrote the number one and we wrote the number two, but we made it bigger. And we wrote the number three and we made it bigger so he could visually start seeing that three is a bigger number than one. All of these things on a daily basis started building a greater foundation for him. You see, when we take judgment out of any situation and start incorporating the power of acceptance into any situation, we overcome things much, much more easily. When you first face a horrible situation where maybe you are looking at the death or disability of someone you love, it's very hard in that moment to embrace them because you're feeling so much pain inside you at that time and you have so much turmoil in your own mind at that time. How are you supposed to come up with a creative solution? How are you supposed to solve this thing when all you're feeling in your heart is all of this pain and all that's going through your mind is all of this big, big storm of thoughts? So what do you do? Slow down. Start accepting things. Stop judging it. And don't look at it as a good thing or a bad thing. And then you'll find that its power over you will start to erode. Because once you take a situation and you don't see it as a good thing or a bad thing, the power of the fear, the power of the disappointment, the power of the unfairness and the injustice that you're facing, that effect, that power starts to slow down. And what I found is that I was able to connect with something much deeper in myself. And as I did, it made me stronger than ever before. So I started applying this power of acceptance to other things in my life. What if I just accepted that my boss was bad, for lack of a better word? What if I just accepted that all the dance students that were coming to me were neither good nor bad? I was just going to accept them exactly as where they are. What I found was my career flourished. 
I started making double the income that I was making before because I was able to just cope with things much better than anybody else was. My students flourished when they came to me to learn dancing because there was no judgment and they were able to just be themselves and celebrate because I was constantly coming up with new creative ways to bring the best out of them. Today, I would like you guys to try the power of acceptance. Pick one thing in your life that you have no control over. Could be anything, could be money related, could be health related, could be a relationship, could be anything. Write it down if you need to write it down, hold it in if you want to hold it in, and give it some thought. Now try not to attach any judgment to it. Accept it exactly as it is. It's not a good thing, it's not a bad thing. It is what it is. Work with it for at least 21 days, because that's how long it takes for something to become a habit within your subconscious mind. And then just start observing. Start observing how that kind of resilient acceptance will turn into almost a sense of gratitude. The very things that were breaking you apart will start being your biggest strength. I'm a better mother to my son today than I was before. And I'm a much better mother to my daughter because of my journey with my son. A few weeks ago, my son was able to read Cat in the Hat. He's 16 years old and we're so proud of him. We recently took a road trip. The kid that could not sit still went on a 10 day road trip with me across three states. Yes, we had to listen to Wheels on the Bus again. He still puts back his towel exactly where he wants it to be. Things are going back into place where he needs them to be. I wish I could get my daughter to do that too. But I love her and I will learn to accept that too. Thank you.